Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the median nerve. This is the median nerve. It is the main nerve of the front of the forearm. This is the forearm and this is the arm. So the median nerve is the main nerve of the front of the forearm. It also supplies the muscles of the thenar eminence. Now where does the thenar eminence lie? The muscles in this region of our palm constitutes the thenar eminence while this is the hypothenar eminence. The median nerve controls the coarse movements of the hand as it supplies most of the long muscles of the forearm. It is therefore called the laborer's nerve. Its root value is C5 to T1. Now before I start with the course of the median nerve, let me show you the brachial artery that you see right here. The median nerve is related to the brachial artery in the arm. Now looking at the course of the median nerve, up to the cubital fossa, the median nerve is related to the brachial artery. In the arm, the median nerve is lateral to the brachial artery. The word lateral means away from the body and medial means towards the body. So, the median nerve lies lateral to the brachial artery as I had shown you in the earlier diagram of the brachial artery. In the middle of the arm, it crosses the brachial artery from the lateral to medial side and remains on the medial side of the artery right up to the elbow. At the cubital fossa, it is the median most structure. Now, to make it more clear, this is the anterior superficial view of the left upper limb. This is the median nerve that you see right here and this structure in red is the brachial artery. Now, in the arm, the median nerve lies lateral to the brachial artery as you see right here. In the middle of the arm, it crosses from the lateral to the median side of the brachial artery as you see right here and it continues on the median side up to the elbow. Now coming back to the previous diagram, the median nerve enters the forearm to lie between the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus right here. It reaches down towards the region of the wrist where it lies deep and lateral to the palmaris longus tendon. It passes deep to the flexor retinaculum that you see right here through the carpal tunnel to enter the palm. Soon it terminates by dividing into muscular and cutaneous branches. Now to make it more clear, this is the anterior superficial view of the left upper limb in the forearm region. Now the median nerve reaches down to the region of the wrist where it lies deep and lateral to the tendon of the palmaris longus, right here. It lies lateral to the tendon of the palmaris longus. It passes deep into the flexor retinaculum and then terminates by dividing into muscular and cutaneous branches. Now let us concise the main points under the introduction and the course of the median nerve. The median nerve is the main nerve of the front of the forearm. It also supplies the muscles of the thenar eminence. The median nerve controls the coarse movements of the hand as it supplies most of the long muscles of the front of the forearm. It is therefore called the laborer's nerve. Its root value is C5 to T1. Now looking at the course of the median nerve, up to the cubital fossa, the median nerve is related to the brachial artery. In the arm, it is lateral to the brachial artery. In the middle of the arm, it crosses the artery from the lateral to medial side and remains on the medial side of the artery right up to the elbow. At the cubital fossa, it is the medial most structure. It enters the forearm to lie between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. It reaches down to the region of the wrist where it lies deep and lateral to the palmaris longus tendon. It passes deep to the flexor retinaculum through the carpal tunnel to enter the palm soon and it terminates by dividing into muscular and cutaneous branches. Now moving on to the relations of the median nerve. In the arm, in the upper part, it is lateral to the brachial artery as you can see here. In the middle, right here, it is anterior to the brachial artery and in the lower part, it is medial to the brachial artery right here. 
in the cubital fossa the median nerve lies medial to the brachial artery behind the bicipital aponeurosis and in front of the brachialis muscle brachialis muscle is the one you see right here it lies anterior to it now at the forearm the median nerve enters the forearm by passing between the two heads of the pronator teres this is the ulna head and this is the humeral head so the median nerve enters the forearm by passing between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle it passes beneath the fibrous arch of the flexor digitorum superficialis that you see right here and runs deep to this muscle on the surface of the flexor digitorum profundus as you see right here it enters through here under the fibrous arch of the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle and lies over the flexor digitorum profundus muscle now in this diagram at the lower end of the forearm 5 cm above the flexor retinaculum the median nerve becomes superficial as you see right here and lies between the tendons of the flexor carpi radialis laterally as you see right here and the flexor digitorum superficialis that you see right here medially so the median nerve lies between the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis laterally and the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis medially now it lies lateral to the tendon of the palmaris longus we had learned that in the course of the median nerve right here finally at the wrist it lies deep to the flexor retinaculum as you can see right here this is the flexor retinaculum and this is the median nerve that lies deep to it concising the important points under the relations of the median nerve in the arm in the upper part it is lateral to the brachial artery in the middle it is anterior to the brachial artery in the lower part it is medial to the brachial artery in the cubital fossa the median nerve lies medial to the brachial artery behind the bicipital aponeurosis and in front of the brachialis at the forearm the median nerve enters the forearm by passing between the two heads of the pronator teres it passes beneath the fibrous arch of the flexor digitorum superficialis and runs deep to this muscle on the surface of the flexor digitorum profundus at the lower end of the forearm 5 cm above the flexor retinaculum it becomes superficial and lies between the tendons of flexor carpi radialis laterally and flexor digitorum superficialis medially it lies lateral to the palmaris longus tendon finally at the wrist it lies deep to the flexor retinaculum moving on to the branches of the median nerve the branches of the median nerve begin from the cubital fossa it gives a muscular branch to the pronator teres a vascular branch to the brachial artery and an articular branch to the elbow joint now let us look at the important points under the branches of the median nerve the branches of the median nerve begin from the cubital fossa it provides a muscular branch to the pronator teres a vascular branch to the brachial artery and an articular branch to the elbow joint after entering the forearm the median nerve gives muscular branches to the flexor digitorum superficialis the flexor carpi radialis that you see right here and the palmaris longus it has a deep branch which supplies the deep muscles that is the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle that you see right here the flexor pollicis longus this and this and the pronator quadratus now the deep branch of the median nerve is called the anterior interosseous nerve the median nerve gives vascular branches to the radial and ulnar arteries and it provides a communicating branch to the ulnar nerve which cannot be seen in this diagram it gives a palmar cutaneous branch that you can see here this is the palmar branch of the median nerve it passes above the flexor retinaculum and supplies the lateral two third of the skin of the palm finally it provides articular branches to the wrist and the radio ulna joints after entering the forearm the muscular branches of the median nerve supply the flexor digitorum superficialis the flexor carpi radialis the palmaris longus 
the deep branch that is the anterior interosseous nerve which supplies the deep muscles that is the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus, flexor pollicis longus and pronator quadratus. It has a vascular branch that supplies the radial and ulnar arteries, a communicating branch to the ulnar nerve, a palmocutaneous branch that arises from the median nerve above the wrist, passes above flexor retinaculum and supplies the lateral two-third of the skin of the palm and finally an articular branch supplying the wrist and the radio ulnar joints. Let's look at the branches of the median nerve in the palm. The median nerve divides into lateral and medial divisions. Now the lateral division that you see right here gives muscular branches to the thena muscles. There are three digital branches for the lateral one and a half digits including the thumb that is this is one this is two and this is the third digital branch. Now out of the three two supply the thumb as you can see right here and one supplies the lateral side of the index finger. Now the medial division that you see right here divides into two common branches for the second and third interdigital clefts supplying the adjoining sides of the index, the middle and the ring finger. Concising the important points under the branches in the palm, it has lateral and medial divisions. The lateral division gives a muscular branch to the thena muscles, three digital branches for the lateral one and a half digits including the thumb. Out of the three, two supply the thumb and one the lateral side of the index finger. The digital branch to the index finger also supplies the first lumbrical. Now the medial division divides into two common digital branches for the second and third interdigital clefts supplying adjoining sites of index, middle and ring fingers. Moving on to the clinical anatomy of the median nerve, the median nerve is also called the laborer's nerve. It is also called the eye of the hand. It controls the coarse movement of the hand as it supplies most of the long muscles of the front of the forearm. Now an important condition is the carpal tunnel syndrome. The involvement of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel at the wrist has become a very common entity. The compression of the median nerve under the flexor retinaculum that results in wasting of the thena muscles, the loss of sensation of lateral two-third of the palm and lateral three and a half digits. It results in ape thumb deformity that is the inability to oppose the thumb and it is tested by the paper holding test. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes on median nerve and the notes on other topics of psychology, physiology, pathology and many more, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.